correspondence there. Mike uh, and Arthur, are you hearing anything from the Joint Information Bureau, the uh, military information people upstairs? Well, Tom, they've more or less uh, closed down that, uh, that uh, avenue of information. Uh, what, we, what we're seeing here is very carefully planned and orchestrated um, program by the U.S. military to make sure that information is given out in a very measured way from the top. Uh, we saw that uh, earlier this evening when there was obviously a lot of activity in the skies. Military people here in Saudi Arabia, in northeastern Saudi Arabia that is, would have no comment and signaled us to Riyadh. They at that time were signaling uh, back to uh, Washington. So there is a chain of confirmation, a release of information uh, that you might expect in this kind of instant warfare to make sure that uh, just that uh, kind and quality and amount of information uh, is given out uh, as the attack proceeds. But little by little, we are getting some pieces of information. Uh, we expect that uh, as the attack uh, continues, uh, and uh, we are again uh, hearing some F-15 interceptors taking off from this air base. Yes, the uh, two, pair, uh, pair of them, Mike, right? Uh, two, uh, two afterburners, so it doesn't look like an F-15. Right. We'll be getting more information, Tom, we expect as the night goes on. All right, uh, it's worth pointing out that uh, Mike Betcher and uh, Arthur Kent were part of that group that had a real scare a few, well, some time ago now, a few moments ago, there was an air raid uh, siren that went off in Saudi Arabia and they were instructed to go down into the uh, bomb shelter. This is what it was like. a chilling moment for all those people in the Haran. Of course, they believe that they were safe. It turns out that they were, uh, and we expect that they will continue to be because it's a very, very heavily secured area. Uh, we're going to go now to uh, Camp Pendleton with the Marine family. The Marines, we uh, believe, are up on the front lines and not yet in action. There's been no indication whatsoever that uh, there has been any kind of uh, ground force movement at this time. Uh, so let's, let's go to uh, Margaret Larson now at Camp Pendleton. Margaret? Tom, I'm in the Comer household where I've been for the past two days talking to Tammy Comer and her four children. Tammy's husband, Carl, is a Marine who is deployed in the Persian Gulf. And as we've been discussing, this is very much like a death in the family. It's something you know is going to come, but still it is a terrible shock when it finally happens. Tammy, what's your reaction to the news today? It really hasn't hit me yet. It, um, I think to, in my heart it's a sign of relief that... We know it was going to happen, and it's it's happened. It's I'm I'm well I'm 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 happy that it's happened. That they can go in there, they can get their job done, and bring our loved ones home. The wait has been excruciating for the families here in this apartment complex, where many of the wives are military wives, the children waiting for their fathers to come home. Yes. But you're pulling together. We are. Uh, this evening we plan to get together and give each other support. We were together earlier when we got the news. A lot of children were with us. My phone's been ringing off the hook. Uh, family members have called. Um, people have called to give their support. We need anything to holler. And we're just going to be one big family and hang, it, hang in there together. Before Carl left, he gave you some advice. He asked you to do something for him. What was it? To be strong. To be real strong. So we're going to do that. Well, it's certainly what I've been watching you do for the past couple of days. Wish you the best. The families here at Camp Pendleton, 20 to 30,000 Marines deployed from this area, have nothing to do now but wait for additional word and to Margaret. hope that their loved ones will indeed come home, Tom. Margaret, I wonder if they take any comfort in the fact that the strategy is to have a very heavy bombing attack first, and the last idea is to send in the ground forces. Has that reassured them at all? Absolutely it does. Not only are many of these men on the ground, but some of them are on ships out in the Gulf, and they are taking a lot of comfort in the fact that the airstrikes are going to make that an easier road for them if indeed they do have to go in. That is something that comforts them. All right, thank you very much, Margaret Larson, at Camp Pendleton in California. The first Marines to land there, of course, were from Camp Pendleton 
and from 29 Palms, they had had extensive desert training, and they got off the airplane sometimes, in, in some instances, off 747s from United Airlines, and within 24 hours, they had gone from California and peacetime to the Persian Gulf and the prospect of war, a war that is underway tonight, desert storm, a war from the air at this hour. We'll be hearing from President Bush, we think, in about 40 minutes or so. We have a report now from NBC's Tom Aspel that we recorded earlier at 7 p.m. Eastern time tonight, the first wave of attacks. This is how Aspel described them from his hotel room in Baghdad. Now, the sky just full of tracer, full of tracer now. And one, oh, and there's a, a very big explosion right off to the west of the city there. Just winking, here it comes now, Tom. There's a very big bang right out on the western side of the city. And now gun Vega, you can hear that, Tom. There are guns and there's more explosions on the western edge of the city. There's red tracer, white tracer, it's going up all over the place. I haven't seen a missile yet. Another big green flash out towards the airport. Can only see in one direction here, Tom, but let me see if I can get just over towards the edge of the window. Maybe you can hear this. Wow, what a sight. What a sight. A lot of slack going up in the air, all these tracers crossing, white blinking. Two big explosions. I can now see a pool of smoke out there. One was red, one was green. Maybe some kind of flare. We're just not up on a war of the 90s. You know, we don't know what these explosions mean. We've never seen them before. We don't know how to recognize exactly what they are. Are you hearing any airplanes? Not yet, Tom. We do not hear any airplanes yet. Another big flash on the edge of the city. That was uh, NBC's Tom Aspel tonight, about an hour and 20 minutes ago, and then his line went dead. Uh, so far as we can tell, uh, it's been very tough, although some news agencies are getting reports out of there, it's been very tough to get any communications out of there whatsoever. In Washington, D.C., retired Colonel Harry Summers, who teaches at the War College, a military expert, and Ed Peck, who is at the Foreign Service, who is Chief of Mission in Baghdad at the Embassy at, at this time. We had this report from a gentleman, I will describe him as a very senior Arab diplomat, that the President will go on television tonight and make an offer. This has not been confirmed by the White House. This is what we're told by the Arab diplomatic community, that after this initial wave of bombing, he'll pause and say, okay, now do you understand, are you going to get out of Kuwait? Does that make sense to you, Colonel Summers? It really doesn't. From a military perspective, it would be disastrous. But, of course, uh, war is a political act, not a military act, so there are other factors at work here. All right, Ed uh, Peck, you uh, wear the political hat of the two there. What would be your judgment? I, I think that's probably a reasonable thing to do from the political perspective, to show again that we're trying to take every possible step to avoid real cataclysm out there. Uh, I, I would guess offhand that it won't be effective. I don't know just how, how much we're carrying out the attacks, but it's too soon, too little. That's a tough bunch of folk out there. Colonel Summers, the, uh, the concern obviously is, I guess, uh, that the Iraqis could reorganize themselves, right? Exactly. They, they, as the North Vietnamese did, every time we had a bombing pause, they used it to resupply, re-equip, and to mount a very effective propaganda campaign against the United States. And I think we can see this coming. Every civilian casualty that they take, they'll be paraded before the cameras. So that's the kind of thing we can, we can see in the immediate future.